skating. Hello, this is where we turn people's heads inside out and show you what's there. I'm very kindly submitting to now here's 50. What do the following literary characters have in common? Lady Bracknell's daughter, Mr. Rochester's housekeeper, Miss Bates's niece in Emma, and Elsie Maynard's husband in Yeoman of the Guard. They're never named. No, that's not the case. That is not what they hold in common. They've got the same first name. Uh, no, they haven't got the same first name. It, that is what you said, isn't it? Yeah. If you said they got all the same uh, second name, I, could, I would have had to give it to you. Uh, we wanted you to name it. That name is Fairfax and is common to all. I should say Lady Bracknell's daughter is the Honourable Gwendolyn Fairfax, Mr Rochester's housekeeper, the elderly Mrs Fairfax, Miss Bates's niece is Jane Fairfax, and Elsie Maynard's husband is Colonel Fairfax. So near and yet so far. Two cars on a test run are travelling at 60 miles an hour and 30 miles an hour round a one-mile circular track. When the faster car has overtaken the other car ten times, how far will it have travelled? 20 yes. laps. Yes, 20 laps is all right. That means once round, it's a mile. 20 miles or 20 laps. Once round is a mile. You've got it very quickly indeed. Have a look at this... Engaging drawing. Now, if you came to the sign, the signpost there, which point would you be at on the map? A, B, C or D? C. It's perfectly correct. Yeah. Do you like to say why? Well, C was the nearest to Bagham, and Bagham was only a mile away. Also, it must be a crossroads, mm. not a T-junction, because that's mm. the way mm. the sign is. And you're right, Bagham is the nearest town. 170 playing 105, the, this question is for fathers only. Which Confederate general in the American Civil War was accidentally shot and killed by his own men? Lee. Not Lee. No idea. Stonewall Jackson was the unhappy man. <laughs> question for the mothers only. What name do you associate with cabbages, biscuits and operas? Savoy. Yes, well done, because you have a Savoy cabbage, apparently got a Savoy biscuit, and you had the Savoy operas, the Gilbert and Sullivan ones. Have a look at this. Only one of the Great Lakes is entirely within the USA. Which one is it? Michigan. It is, Mrs Morley, Lake Michigan. Let's see it. And there you see how it works. Have a look at this. For which of these periods, when they appear, they will any second now, there they are, for which of these periods was prohibition in force in the United States of America? Was it A, B, C or D? B. No, Mr Morley. Is it A? Is it C or D? C. C. Is correct. 1920 to 1933. Which African animal has a Dutch name meaning earth pig? Aardvark. Aardvark is right. What in opera or ballet terms is a travesti role? A travesti role. Change of sex from in clothing. That's right. It is simply where the man's dressed up as a woman or the woman is dressed up as a man. So, here's another question. In the late 18th century, Jonathan Buttall, suitably dressed, Posed for a painting by Gainsborough, what was it? The Mrs. Laughing Pierce. Cavalier. The Laughing Cavalier. No, not the Laughing Cavalier. Mr Morley. The Boy in Blue. Yeah, well, Blue Boy, the Blue Boy, but it's the same thing, The Boy in Blue by Thomas Gainsborough, quite right. The score standing at 190, 145, we get the last question. It is this. Admar, Zeboim and Zoar, sometimes called Bila, 
together with two other cities, formed the biblical cities of the plain. What were the other two? Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah <laughs> were the other two. Life ran very high in those days. Well, we better stop before we're all turned into pillars of salt after that. <laughs> the final scores, 190, 155. The Pearsons have won. There they sit. Uh, the Morleys did well, I suspect. They were just a little slower on that buzzer. But it's the Pearson family which returns another day. And the programme itself returns next week at the same time. And until then, goodbye. again for two perfectly ordinary families to pit their perfectly ordinary wits against themselves in a perfectly ordinary bout of mental arm wrestling by Jiminy. Taking part tonight are the Brainy family from Croydon. Mr Giles Brainy is a quantity surveyor. Hello. His wife, Serena Brainy, is a quantity surveyor. Hello. And their children are Julian 16 and Nigel 15, who are quantity surveyors. Hello. Into the lists against them are the Smart Arse family from Cambridge. Mr Giles Smart Arse is a quantity surveyor. Hello. His wife, Serena Smart Arse, is a quantity surveyor. They are, and their children are Julian 16 and Nigel 15, who are both quantity surveyors. <laughs> We're now going to show you a perfectly ordinary BBC programme about quantity surveying. <laughs> Mark asks, how many quantity surveyors were to the left of the bird with the big tits? I think that if you are obviously phony, I think people can spot it. I certainly can, I, I believe, with people that I don't know on television, that there's something that I don't believe when, when they're being, supposedly being themselves. I, I think that I can see when when they're not being themselves. So, you know... Uh, what do you say? Well, I think exactly the opposite. I think people can lie in their teeth and make on people, television and make, and, and make people believe it if you? they've got the right kind of personality. Who? I Who? don't believe it. Well, I wouldn't name them. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I certainly am thinking of one whom I know to be an out-and-out -out charlatan who is, is, has, been, has won a number of war, awards for truth-telling and he is a congenital liar. Oh. And whoever we cut to after that, Colin yeah. Bell, make it <laughs> <laughs> Oh, tush, tush, Now I call that unfair. It's darling of you to say so. What's the good of changing colour? I had considerable...